Hi, I'm Ellen. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be reviewing Emma Chamberlain's The Ideal Planner. On a recent Target run, I saw some ads playing for the planner and I decided to pick one up and see what it's all about. So first, talking about some of the specs of the planner. The price of the planner is $18 on Target and Amazon right now. I paid $21, so I don't know if that was just with the tax added. And then on the book, it does say its full price would be $30. The planner has space to plan for 12 months, but the month and dates are not printed into it so you can kind of put it in yourself in your own handwriting. It has a total of 240 pages so between each month there is six activity pages and there's also some note pages and other things in the beginning and end of it. It is a very big planner so it's about seven by nine inches and it's also pretty thick. Um, it's definitely bigger than my bullet journal and planners that I've used in the past so I don't know how functional it would really be for my own personal use. Another thing that I thought was kind of interesting was in the product details it says that this planner is 2.31 pounds. Um, it doesn't feel that heavy when you're holding it in your hands, but it seems like pretty heavy. <laughs> I don't know. And of course I need to show you what the planner actually looks like, so here is the front and back cover. It has really good quality and the paper inside is really thick as well. Here is a size comparison with my A5 bullet journal. Now I'm just going to flip through the first couple of pages so that you get an idea of what this planner is like. These pages are really fun and playful. I love the way they're designed and the actual planner pages are very functional. Here is the blank monthly page, so each of the monthly pages look like this. And then here is the weekly page and all of the weeks are pretty much the same. Next, I'm going to go into some of the pros and cons for the Ideal Planner for me. So these are my personal opinions. Some of the pros I have might be cons for other people or vice versa. One pro would be because the pages are blank and you can fill in the months. Um, if you end up skipping a month or two between planning, like you don't like using a planner all the time, it's nice because you don't feel like you're wasting all of the pages. I personally do use the planner more often, so for me it's not like a huge plus or minus. I like the nice minimalistic aesthetic that's going on throughout this planner. There are some more designed pages, but I think that overall it has a very clean look to it, which I really like. Emma put a variety of different activity pages in this planner, and some of my favorite ones are the journal prompt style ones she's put in. So there's one in the beginning that is like, write a letter to yourself a year from now. I think that's really fun. There was one that was, um, asking you to kind of describe a business that you would like to open someday and I think that's really cool and you know also encouraging entrepreneurship in girls so that's awesome. Another one of the pages I thought was really great that she added was a password page which is towards the back of the book. Um, I think you know in this day and age one of the safest places to put your passwords is like in a written journal and so it's nice to have that and I'm someone who forgets my passwords all the time, so it's nice to have it all in one place and to have a dedicated place for it. Now moving on to cons. My first con would be it's just so big. Uh, I think it would be hard for me to want to carry this around all the time just because of its size and if I don't bring it with me then I'm not going to use it as much. So not as functional for myself. Uh, I also personally do not like spiral bound planners, so for me that's kind of a downside, but I will say it is a nicer spiral bound one because the spiral is covered by the cover, if that makes sense. I also personally don't like the setup of this planner's weekly pages. Uh, it's just very basic and kind of blocky, so there's a little bit of room for customization in that you could like split each day into events and tasks. But for me, there's some weeks where I'm super busy and I like to do hourly planning so that I can be really on top of my life and productive, and other weeks where I have barely anything going on and prefer just a more simple like block to put all my events in and then a more journal style um, space for the rest of 
my planning. <laughs> so there's just not enough flexibility in this planner for my own tastes. I'm also not sure if I am in the target age group for this planner. So it's kind of hard for me to tell because of course, if you get too young, I feel like you don't fully need a planner. But then there was some instances where the language being used in the planner I felt like was maybe for an older crowd, but maybe I'm just old and I feel like young people shouldn't be doing cuss words and that's not the case anymore, I don't really know. Just for reference, this is the main page I was referring to in terms of the language thing, and it's really not that bad. It's probably just because I'm a Gemini and I was a little shook, um, but I know these are just a joke, so really not that bad at all. I think generally it probably is the more high school age range for Prime users just because, you know, there's not enough space necessarily for college students if you're super busy, um, and I would think the same is true for working people. Also in my age range, which is recent college graduate, um, most of the activity pages were kind of frivolous to me and I didn't need them. They're cute though. A couple of other just nitpicky things that I don't love would be on the front cover of the planner it says Emma Chamberlain on it and so I get it, she created it, but once, you know, a consumer buys it, it makes it kind of feel like it's Emma Chamberlain's planner and not your own. So it would have been kind of cool to have that spot blank for you to fill in your own name um, or just not including her name on it. And then the other super nitpicky thing would be on the back cover. I think it would have been nice to have all that information printed on the inside of the back cover and then having the back cover just being the plain design she created on the front because I think the design looks really cool, but I personally don't like having all the words and stuff because it is a planner and not a book. I don't know, that's just a super nitpicky thing that I feel about it. <laughs> Lastly, I'm gonna touch on the price again. So I think that $18 is maybe an okay place to be, but with the full price of this planner being $30, I think that's a reach. Uh, generally for this type of planner, it would be in the $20 or under range. There's a lot of really beautiful planners that are fully pre-made and also have activity pages or stickers or different things included that are in that $20 range. And so I think if it was at full price, I definitely wanna, wanna pay for it. And also for me, because it doesn't fit my needs, I'm probably going to end up returning it. Um, but yeah, I think if you're a big fan of Emma's and this is the type of planner that you want, it is totally fine and it's a great way to support creators that you love, so totally go for it. Part of me feels like she priced it this way because either she knew her fans well enough to know they would pay for it no matter what it was priced at, um, or she knew it would be discounted most of the time and so it would stay at that $20 range, but I'm not entirely sure. I hope my video was able to help you figure out if you would like to buy Emma's The Ideal Planner, if it's the right type of planner for you. Let me know what you think of this planner in the comments down below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!